Amen. First Peter chapter three, verse 15. Are you comfortable? Just one verse, we'll move right on through. First Peter 3.15, Peter speaking, says, But in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer if you're a preacher. Oh, I'm sorry. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. This is a verse for everyone in this house that you have to give and know how to give an answer to everyone who they, they need a hope. They need to know this December always is that opportunity to share with people about the birth of Christ. And people wonder why you got a hope. Why aren't you as scared as other people? Why is it about eternity? What is it about knowing that you got another life ahead? How do you explain that? How do you talk about that? So when I get to this time of the year, I just like to give kind of an overview of what's going to be uh, uh, what's ahead for us, and also think about the birth of Christ. I love this time of year. Even there's something about, you know, there had to be a reason Jesus came to earth and you're sitting by it. He meant he came for you, he came for me, and in him showing up, there's angels involved. There's applause from heaven. There's shudders from hell. Everything coming together. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son born of a woman. He meant he brought it in, through a virgin at that all these, and then a, a husband that wanted to put her away. It's a crazy time to think about this time of the year. Can you give a hope for that which lies inside of you? Oh, well, you know, because I just went down to a church, met a Pentecostal preacher. Well, now, now that's, you got to do a little deeper than that. You got to go a little bit more than that. You got to tell them about Jesus. This is an opportunity to share your testimony and how that God is overcoming in your life. Hallelujah. And share with other people in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. That was a prayer. You may be seated. You know, what is it that people believe about Christ and about him coming to earth? You know, this is some things that, that we've written down. 67% believe that the entire story of Christmas is historically accurate. If Jesus had never been born, people believe there would be less charity. You know, why, why would there even be a need of giving? But it was for God so loved the world, he gave. Amen. He brought Christ into the world for us. 61% said less kindness. People would, I promise you, I would not be as nice as I am. Had it not been for Jesus coming to earth. Sometimes Jesus is the reminder over and over again. Be nice. Be nice. Amen. Be nice. Uh, uh, less personal happiness. Less tolerance. You know, the, the word of tolerance, and I use this phrase quite often. Whatever you choose to tolerate will what? Never change. But there are things that I tolerate. How many know you tolerate probably the people around you? No matter how well they've been, you just have been tolerating them. And when you tolerate people, well, that just means, you know what? If you don't change, I'm still going to love you through it. Hallelujah. There are things about my kids I just have to tolerate. I just, you know, they, I can see it in them. I'm just going to love you anyway. But the bottom line is it was through Christ that helped me tolerate people. And some of you were brought up with different cultures. You're in different areas. And it was Jesus that made the difference. You know, let, this will be honest with you guys. I worship a homeless Poor Savior. You know, he wasn't, yes, he is a rich king. But when he came to earth, he came as homeless. He came in, in almost poverty to the point where he didn't have a change purse. Somebody else had it. We know that Judas was a treasure. But there were times they'd run a little low money and Jesus said, go fishing. And they pulled a coin out of a fish's mouth and paid taxes with it. So when I think about who I serve, you know, I, I don't get arrogant about it. I thank God for Jesus. Amen. 47% said, uh, you know, people believe there would be uh, actually more war. Can, can you defend Jesus? Yes, I can. Over and over again. The Lord himself has given you a sign. All Christianity hinges on two miracles. Two miracles. One is the virgin birth and one is the resurrection. Amen. You got to believe them both. And this is the thing. When I, when I got born again, this thing's by faith, first off, right off the bat. By faith, I got to believe this. But a virgin birth, that Christ came through a virgin. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And then the resurrection of Christ. All of the Old Testament anticipates his arrival. He's coming. He's coming. Get ready. Jesus is coming. The validity of even the smallest part of the Bible teeters again on the virgin birth. Without the virgin birth, Joseph is in a lot of trouble. 
Amen. As a matter of fact, without the virgin birth, uh, Mary's a promiscuous harlot. All of Christ's followers, including you and I, are imbeciles. That without the virgin birth, we've got to believe that this actually is what God did. And, all, and those that give, gave their lives as martyrs were absolute fools if they didn't believe it. The scripture says in Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. I'm looking for a sign. Amen. Uh, the son will be a virgin with a child, will give birth to a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel. I must, I thank God for signs. Amen. When I'm traveling, I'm looking for a sign. I'm looking for a place to get to a destination. Yesterday, I had to go over to somebody's house to watch a football game because it wasn't aired on my channel. So I, I Googled how to get there. And if back one of them subdivisions, I would have never found it had it not been for signs. Amen. I am following signs to get there. Well, this was a sign. And you had, to, uh, you had to wait, wait, and wait, and wait for, for 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. There was no signs. There was nothing. And then the word started coming down that a man named Joseph was supposed to get married to a girl named Mary. Amen. Then there was Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth. I love that story. Just going to give you a quick overview. But you remember Zachariah? When God spoke to him while he's in the temple, said, oh, you're going to have a baby. And, and Zachariah said, that ain't going to happen. Elizabeth ain't going to have no baby. The next thing you know, the, the angel shut Zachariah's mouth for nine months. He's a minister in the house. What? And I thought to myself, what if God shut my mouth? What if I had a doubts? Amen. That, that. There was a lady in the church that was going to have a baby. He, uh, well, you know, just look at me and Sister Lori. That, that, that God spoke to me and said, you, you go out, you're 60, you fit to have a baby. <laughs> and God shut my mouth for now, and I couldn't even preach to y'all. I just had to go. <laughs> for nine months, I doubt y'all would stay here with me. But you'd have to wait and see the miracle because you know it had to be God to shut my mouth. <laughs> Amen. So, so then, it, and then it happened. It was, it was these, these things that kept falling back and forth, back and forth. It got prophetically painted, portrayed, and pictured in advance the immaculate conception of Jesus for your faith to hang on to. If this, you know, in, in our society today, in, in, I know that there's doctrinal issues and illiteracy among believers. Amen. Uh, Barna, one of the poll setters, said that 26% of all believe all religions are basically equal. 26%. I do not. 50% believe that good works will get you to heaven. I do not. I think good works are good. Amen. Like bad works are bad. But the bottom line is you got to have faith in Christ. 35% do not believe that Jesus rose from the dead. How can you not believe that, man? 45% do not believe that Satan exists. You don't believe there's a devil? You think all this is just your fault? There is a devil running around out there. Amen. This is strong evidence of how American Christianity is conforming to the dominant secular society. It's all right to be religious according to the dictates of postmodernism as long as your faith exists just in your head. But I'm going to tell you this heart thing. When God gets down in your heart and you start believing and trusting in Him, and this distance here begins to change everything. To believe otherwise can, you know, when, when if I believed that... Uh, uh, if I don't believe in all the things, uh, you know, same-sex marriage and all the other things that are going on in the world, then, then I'm intolerant. I'm a menace to society. I, I don't believe that. I believe there has to be some standard. There has to be a belief in God. There has to be something that I set forward. You know, it doesn't mean I can't love you. It doesn't mean I can't care about you. But the bottom line is sin is sin. Amen. And I got to turn from that. And I got to trust God for whatever's coming next. You know, maybe Jesus does need defending in 2020. Maybe we need to stand up for him. Or we need to remind ourselves that we really believe. If you think about it, all the elements of a Christian worldview are in the Christmas story because the coming of Christ changed history. Literally, everything changed from B.C. to A.D. We aren't straining things to say everything is different now that Jesus has come into the world. Everything changed. The coming of Christ established the truth that all believe. Listen to these things, guys. An angel visited a virgin who became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. 
The baby in her womb was the Son of God from heaven. God had to figure out a way to bridge this gap between heaven and earth, so he sends his seed into a woman, and here it is that this, this gospel is fixed to take place. Then God calls the heathen emperor to call for taxation that sent Mary and Joseph back to Bethlehem at the very moment Jesus was born. So God started establishing, and he used government. And I wonder sometimes how much our government is being used. I know some of us are trying to fight against, but what is God up to? He's always up to something. A star led the Magi, the wise men, from the east directly to the house and where the child Jesus was. Now, again, it wasn't, (laughs) did, did the wise men show up when the baby was born? I'll answer that. No, they showed up. At the child Christ, somebody sent me a picture this week of three wise men, and they were going to kidnap them. And I've told you before, if you see wise men at a nativity scene, that's wrong. They were not there. They didn't show up till Jesus was two and a half, three years of age. Amen. So if you see the wise men, just go knock them down. Don't steal them. But that's, that's for another sermon. Amen. Angel spoke to the shepherds. An angel spoke to Joseph on three separate occasions. Joseph thought about, I, I, I can't do this. I can't marry this woman. She's already pregnant. Well, I've not been with her. We're not even totally married yet. You know, this, this here thing, what am I going to do? And then the angel said, hey, that, that child came from heaven. You hold on to her. You protect her. You look after her. Amen. The angel spoke. Amen. The angel spoke to the Magi, warning them not to return to Herod. Even the slaughter of the infant boys of Bethlehem fulfilled the ancient prophecy. When a Simeon held the baby Jesus in his arms, he prophesied of his death on the cross. Well, would you look in second? Uh, this is not on the overhead, but in Luke chapter 2, in Luke chapter 2, verse 25. Luke chapter 2, verse 25, says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, or waiting for things to come together. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was custom of the law required, which was the circumcision. Simeon took him in his arms, and he praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles, not just to the Jews, but to the Gentiles, and for the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause a fallen and a rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. I picked this up this morning before I came because I thought to myself, there's something about this guy, Simeon, that he would go to the temple. A friend of mine, I I just got the message. Some of you remember uh, Billy Higginbotham. Billy passed away on Saturday. Billy was a guy who was a part of my life for many, many years. Came to this church, lived in Tennessee. And just two weeks ago, he called me up and he said, he was so excited. He said, Pastor, I just want to talk to you. He said, I've been watching you online, been watching the church grow and this, that, and the other. And and." People pay attention to what goes on in the house. They're observing what's happening. And Billy had a heart for God. Okay, so this is very important for me to share this with you. Amen. But here's Simeon. He would go into the house and something was missing. Something was missing. And then it came this day that he said to himself, I will not die. I don't believe I'm going to pass until I'm able to hold the Christ child. And when he saw Mary and he saw Joseph and he saw that little baby and he held that little baby in his arms and and, and it was that moment when he realized, and and I know this is uh, morbid for some, people don't think about death, they don't want to think about leaving but this man actually, if you read the story correctly, is ready to depart. He wants to leave this earth. He wants to go on to what God has for him and he can't go until there's a release in his spirit and he holds this little baby in his arms and as he's looking at mama, he says to her, this child will cause a falling and a rising among many. There are going to be some people that are going to rise up because they're going to meet this little baby and then there are going to be others they're going to bow down because they meet this little baby but then he looks at mama and he says this child is going to pierce your heart 
There's something going to happen in this child's life. It's going to, he's going to break your heart. And we know what it was. It was at the cross when Mary was there and seeing her child, her, her son, nailed to the cross. How that pierced her heart. That affected her. But he prophesied it. He laid it out. And when I'm reading this story, I, I remind myself, there's certain things I believe in my heart. God, don't let me pass from this earth until this happens. I'm hanging on. I'm believing for my children. I'm believing for my grandkids. Sometimes you've got to have something to hold on to go to church for. Can I get an amen? It's the reason why I go, i got to believe God for that. Then the angel spoke to the Magi, warning them not to return. Even the slaughter of the infant boys of Bethlehem were fulfilled uh, in ancient prophecy. Amen. Then there are the names that were given. And again, to, this will be later preaching. But the Bible calls him Wonderful Counselor. You know, some people have a comma there. They say he's wonderful and he's counselor. In the Hebrew, there's no comma there. It tells me he's a wonderful counselor. How many times have you went to Christ and said, Lord, I just need a little help? Amen. I, I need some information. Uh, the truth of the matter is, I would not make a major decision without prayer. Second, I would not make a major decision under fear. Amen. I want to make sure that I got peace with this thing that I'm fixed to go through. So he's a wonderful counselor. He's mighty God. This baby that's coming is the mighty God. There's no other God like him. He's mighty God. He's the everlasting father. How can this son be a father? That's the beauty of this glorious mix-up of the Godhead. He's everlasting father. Amen. And also, he will be the prince of peace. Peace is adjusting one's life to the will of God. You know, there are times your life gets a little staticky and gets a little out of place. But if I could just adjust my life, this holiday time, this Christmas time, to adjust your life to say, you know what? It's not all about giving the gifts. It's not all about receiving the gifts. It's about reminding myself that Christ Jesus came, amen, and his life changed my life. Hallelujah. So I'm going to adjust my life. When you see my hand doing this, this is me reaching up on top of an old Frigidaire refrigerator, getting hold of an old yellow radio that my mom had that when we ran through the house on those wooden floors, and that radio would bounce, it would go out of tune, and she would not be able to hear WHNT party line. Amen. And she would scream at us for running through the house and bouncing that Frigidaire, which bounced the, the radio, which got it out of tune. So she'd have to go up there and adjust that thing. It wasn't like today. We got that solid state or whatever it is today. It always stays on channel. Amen. But on this thing here, it would just, so she'd have to adjust that radio just enough to get it to come back in. It was the same way with me and my brother when we had to go outside and turn the antenna for my daddy to get the channel to come in right. Amen. All three channels. Uh-huh. Amen. Your life is about peace, my friend. Adjust in your life. Sometimes it don't take but a little adjusting to get yourself right. Sometimes it takes a total repentance and turning around to get it right. Amen. He's God with us, the Son of the Most High, Christ the Lord. Then there are the things that He will accomplish. I believe that some people think, well, Christmas is simply about me. And, and it was for me when I was a kid, simply about getting a gift. I didn't understand why He came. We were people that needed saving. All through Scripture talks about salvation and the reason that Christ would come. He will save His people from their sins. Uh, I have this great belief that those who have trusted Christ with their lives and give their life to Christ, amen, that God has a heaven, a kingdom waiting for them. I believe that He will save us. If there's anything that I need, it's saving. Not only from my sins, but from myself. I need saving from Satan. I need saving from this world. I need my sins. I just need to be redeemed. Can I get an amen? Amen. He'll save us. So when Jesus came, that's why Simeon was so excited. That's why Anna, we hadn't even talked about Anna yet. That's why Anna was so excited. That's why the angels, when, when, uh, you know, when they showed up from heaven to earth, there was excitement. Because now there's daddy. It's all about family. There's all about connection. There's all, all about being a father. And daddy, daddy wanted a family. Amen. The angels knew that. So the whole issue of Jesus showing up was connecting the, the father back to his children. He will reign from David's throne in Jerusalem. He will always be there and the kingdom will never end. It will continue. It doesn't matter what 2020 threw at us. He's still the king over the kingdom. Amen. Luke chapter 2 verse 8 and I'll start closing with this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. 
keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Stop. Go back. Go back to your mic. In the darkness, there's a fire. There's sheep. There's shepherds. The shepherds are there. There has to be that moment when uh, the crack, you know, there's something about the fire, the crackling of the fire. And it's dark. And I'm used to it. Been doing this all the time. Can't go home until we, we take care of all the sheep. So they out there a month, two months, however long. Amen. They were living. Everybody say living. Living in the field. They weren't just saying they were living there. Amen. Keeping watch over the flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And the Bible says they were scared. I would be too. An angel showed up, right? And the angel, when he got there, in verse 10 says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I'm bringing you some good news of great joy. Everybody say great joy. That will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You're going to find a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. Mm. So you got this scene where the guys are around the fire. And they sit there and the angel shows up. And when he yells and he proclaims, hey guys, there's going to be a baby born in Israel. Amen. In Jerusalem. Go run over there in Bethlehem. Amen. Go there. And there's a great excitement. Amen. And the angels uh, proclaim to him one angel. One, everybody say one angel. Proclaims to him. And there's a nervousness at that moment. Then verse 13 hit. Suddenly. I love suddenly. I love suddenlies. Suddenlies are that spontaneous moment when you didn't see it coming. It was suddenly. Suddenly. Amen. A great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Hold on. One angel showed up. One angel showed up. It said to them, I bring you good news of great joy to all the people. Today in the town of David, which is Bethlehem, amen, a child is born of you. You're going to find a sign, baby wrapped in clothes. One angel. Then the rest of them show up. Did y'all catch that? It was almost like one outran the rest of them. One got ahead of the rest. And then the rest of the angels showed up suddenly, amen, and began to yell, glory to God in the highest on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. If one angel didn't scare you, imagine what a whole choir would have done to you. Amen. When I read this, it says, the angel pronounced, I bring great joy. The Greek word for great is the word mega. We use it all the time. Mega joy to all people. No one is omitted. Then the Lord makes it close and personal. For there is born to you, this day, to you, a Savior. To you in the middle of whatever your pain. To you in the middle of whatever your difficulty Anger, frustration, sin, failure, sickness. To you today, a Savior. You know, you may not see the promise fulfilled, but you see the promise present. And the call is to rejoice. There is at the foot of the cross, we come and we, we receive the ultimate gift of eternal life through Christ Jesus, the Son of God. It is from that cross, there shines the light of the world. A full hope of salvation. People need to know what it is you believe. They need to know that you believe. When I read this, I just, I believe in angels. I believe there are angels among us. I believe angels are watching over my grandchildren and my kids. I believe angels are watching you. Amen. I believe that the same God, wonderful counselor, is still counseling me today in you. I believe he's a mighty God. I believe that everything will bow to him. Amen. So people who know this eternal truth of God's word, they celebrate. And we celebrate Christmas. And we celebrate this time of the year. Amen. We gather together and we remind people. We embrace the promise with rejoicing. And we let the spirit of celebration fill your heart. Amen. Over this holiday, remind yourself of Simeon who was waiting on something. Expectation is the beginning of miracles. This is a season of miracles. 
Miracle after miracle after miracle. A virgin birth. John the Baptist being born. Zachariah's mouth opening back up. Angels showing up to shepherds. And again, didn't show up to the kings. Didn't show up to the palaces. They showed up to the fields. Showed up to the common man. Amen. To share about a little boy being born in Bethlehem. That's what Christmas is about. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you that each one of us has to give an account. Set apart you in our hearts. And be prepared to give an answer. God, I ask your blessing upon this season as we move through it as a church. I pray for the world. You love this world. I think of the light of God shining around this world. Your glory covering this world. I pray in the name of Jesus against this pandemic. It's time for it to be over. God, I speak healing to the world. Speak against fear. God, I thank you for your coming. I thank you for changing lives. I thank you that this is not all there is. And right now, we will enter this season knowing that there are people that we have loved that have passed. I thank you for their impact in our lives. Their love for us. Our love for them. We'll see them again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God praise for His Word. When I, when I say the term mega joy, mega joy, that literally means to rejoice or to spin around. When's the last time you got so excited that you just almost lost your balance? Now, that's easy as you get older. But to spin around, to, to just to, to be thrilled, to be walking and hear a voice and to turn around to hear it again, to see who it was, to spin around. It's so important, amen, to have that kind of joy in your life right now. I, I know that there's heartbreak. I know that there's hurt. But I also know there's hope. Amen. And I'm going to stand on that hope and keep believing for that hope. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. In front of you is an envelope. Amen. A tithe and offering envelope. H, I thank you guys. We're going to bring our offering forward. We're going to start moving back into some sense of normalcy. Amen. Within the next few weeks, you're going to see it's getting more and more normal. I just, I'm, uh, I just, I don't see a need to constantly try to keep us in suspense. As a church, Many folk I already know have been, they've already gone through. I, I talked with uh, one of our respiratory nurses last night. She said, Pastor, I was at the hospital and this 90-year-old man came in. I asked him, why are you here, sir? He said, well, I got the COVID. She said, okay. He said, I'm positive. She said, okay. And uh, do you have any symptoms? He said, no, nope, I can taste, I can smell, I can breathe. No fever. She said, sir, go home. You know, we just keep scaring people over and over with this. So, uh, and, and it, it is. It is a virus. It is real. Amen. I don't deny it. But I also don't deny living. So I want us to get back to a sense of living. So we're going to bring forth our gifts and our offerings this morning. Amen. And I'm just going to make one statement. David, take care of the rest here. Uh, stable in the saddle is next Saturday, this coming Saturday. I have a few more booklets in the back. We have like 50 folk already signed up for it. It's important that you be at the other campus by 8.30. We'll be in the sanctuary. Amen. And we're going to walk through about three and a half hours of foundational truths. You'll be able to ask questions. We'll talk. We'll get to know each other a little bit more. I thank you for your, your, uh, your love and your attendance for this house. This has been a, a hard year, but it's also been a good year. Amen. Good things have happened. Amen. I've met some great people. I've seen some great things happen. Amen. So as we move toward it, we're also going to be taking, asking you to give over and above as far as helping other people. We have people that have been calling. They need help at Christmas time with gifts or things for their family. We're preparing gift cards. So when I say that, just anything, if you write on the card, you can bring that bucket up here. Set it right here. Amen. Come on up here. Yes, sir. Just put it right Oh, there's one there. Okay, you going you catch her in the back just in case. Y'all double teaming me. Amen. You I love it, man. Love it, coach. Uh, but we're also gonna be taking up stuff. If you give over to Bob, look, just take that uh, 
envelope and write Christmas on it. You write Christmas on it, then we'll know. If you write Xmas, I won't be offended. How many know that Xmas is one of the first Christmas that they wrote? That the word X, the letter X, is the Greek word for Christ. They often would do stuff like that because if they got caught writing Christ, they could be persecuted. So they'd write X. So anytime I see somebody write Xmas, I thank them for adding Christ in Christmas. Amen. All right? Amen. So it's a, this is an important thing there. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. So December 12th, we have SITS, which is disabled and sad. I'll pastor talk about that. Uh, clothing ministry is open today at the New Caney campus. If you guys need some clothes or know anybody that might need some clothes or anything of that nature, um, please, they have bunches of them over there ready to go. Now, through the 20th, we're going to have the angel tree. That's what Pastor was talking about as far as the um, Christmas cards. Just put Christmas on there and uh, or just put gift card, whatever. However it comes out, we'll interpret it, all right? Uh, and then the uh, pastor will see to it that it goes towards families that ha have contacted us. So there are already some families that have been in contact with us. Let us know, hey, COVID's been a little rough. You know, uh, we're going to need some help. And so we have those people. And then if you know of anybody, please let us know. Um, sometimes we don't bless folks, not because we don't want to, but because we didn't know. And if we don't know, I mean, we try to be as prophetic as we can, but we, we don't actually read your guys' minds. So let us know. Uh, December 19th, TLCC, um, the Off-Road Misfits. The Houston Diesel's Christmas Car Show supports Shriners Hospital. $25 entry fee for your cars. Um, it says don't have to enter a car. Just bring an unwrapped uh, children's gift. So basically it's a car show. Mike, you want to say something about that? No, 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 no. Listen, that's, so that's the next one. So December 13th, which is next week um, on Sunday, Pastor's going to bring his purple car, and he's asking that the churches would fill that thing up. Front, back, trunk. If they, if they want to be in the car show, sign up in at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock when? Okay. Okay. Okay, so if you want to have your car in the show, you have to be there by 2 o'clock and have it signed in. Otherwise, you're not going to win nothing. That's basically what they're saying. That's perfect. Uh, we understand that. Um, yeah, but so next week on the 13th, Pastor is bringing his car. Um, and we're hoping to be able to fill the whole thing. That was his thing. He said, David, I want to bring my car out there. He said, I did that before with school supplies. He said, and people showed out. So I said, well, bring it out. Let's see what they can do, you know. Toys are bigger than school supplies, so, you know, it may not, we may have to use this truck, too, you know. Some, yeah, yeah, Travis said, we'll, we'll work it out. Trust me, there's enough overflow cars out there. We can start stacking up. But just bring a, any unwrapped Christmas toy for children. For somebody, you've got to remember, these kids are in the hospital. They're, they got all kinds of different ailments. A, right. Any ages. Or 35. Yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's to help. The, it's basically what it's doing is helping families. Obviously, there's a lot of expense in having a child in a, in a hospital. Not only that. Huh? It takes away the parents. They need to focus on their child. Right. Not worrying about what they're Right.
Right. It turns out a gift shop's not always the best place to go, you know. So we can be the gift shop that they need this Christmas. And so, yeah, seriously, though, this, uh, next week, unwrapped cr- Christmas present. Any kind of toy for young people on up. Um, let's be a blessing this year. You know, uh, God says that it's better to give than to receive. And I believe this because when you give, he says he's going to press it down, shake it together, and overflow it. So what he's saying, he's saying, if you can release some, I can give you a bunch. But I can't do that because I work on principles. God works on principles. And so what he was want, trying to do is he's trying to bless your life. You just got to position yourself in order to do that. Amen. Today we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Bills paid off. Settlements. Inheritance. Rebates and returns. Debts demolished. Royalties received. Favor, success to the kingdom. I'm going to pray real quick and we'll get out of here. Lord, I love you. I'm so grateful for the fact that I go to a church that people want to give to your kingdom, that that people want to be loved. They want to be your hands and feet. So this Christmas season, let us to reach out with so much love that the world can't help but notice that you're active and you're living and you're among them through us. And I'm so grateful for what you're doing in this house. Continue to make us like a lighthouse on a hill that others would see us and want to know what's happening in the little country church. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen.